Okay guys, welcome to uh, solving the transport phenomena problem for a uh, slanting, uh, you can say, for a liquid over a slant fillet, slant plate and it's a liquid fillet. Okay, so you have the length, let's take the length as L, so we can do it in the Z direction, is equal to Z is equal to zero. And you just use Cartesian's coordinates for this because it's much easier. This is your liquid interface and your width would be y. I'm sorry about that. Not much better, but I'll live with it. Um, okay, so this is your y, and this width you can take this small area, this height as delta x. Uh, maybe you can take it as, uh, if you're considering a small portion, let's take it as delta x. Let's do um, the mass balance for this and solve this problem. Okay, so first thing you need to know is the velocity is in the z direction and it is a factor of x. And velocity in the x direction and velocity in the y direction is equal to zero because you know that it's only falling downwards. And this is kept at an angle of beta. And now you can just uh, do the momentum balance for this. So let's say the momentum at across the surface at z is equal to zero. So imagine if you're looking from z, looking at this, this would be your delta x, this would be your y, and you know y is equal to w. So it's just area delta x into w into the combined momentum flux, which is, we'll just take it as phi, here it's z, z, and that is at z is equal to zero. And that will be adding. And now in this group, or in this system, you have the momentum flux going out here. The area is the same, delta x, w. Uh, you can remove that into it. looks a bit like x. So I'm just going to remove that from that. And you have here, again, phi, z, z, at z is equal to l. That will be negative. And now you have to take across x. So across x, if you take it, let's say, the other two sides. So this is across x. Here you have your w. Here you have your z. You know your z is l and you know your, oh, sorry about that, this is v and your y is w. It's a bit confusing. <laughs> Just take your area here. This is w into l. Um, here it will be phi zx at x minus w l 5 zx x plus delta x and you assume it's leaving from the system and finally you have your gravitational force also acting on it because you know from the mass balance that it is the rate of momentum by convective transport in minus rate of momentum by convective transport out plus rate of momentum by molecular transport in minus rate of momentum by molecular transport out plus the gravitational force. So the only term which is left is the gravitational force. So what's the volume for this? That would be W into L into delta X. And you have all the area here and that divided by the density would give you the mass and mass into the gravitational constant would be the gravitational force if it was not at an angle. Since it is an angle, so we have to take the vertical vector downwards. So you can just multiply this with cos beta and you will be able to get the gravitational side. So you have your ROM in, ROM out, ROM in, ROM out, and your gravitational force. This is across Z at zero, Z at L, X, and X plus delta X. Now you can just divide all of them together with W, X, uh, L. You can divide the whole thing. And what you will get here is phi Z, 0 minus phi z at l divided by here l plus 5 z delta x sorry x minus phi z x x plus delta divided by delta x plus your rho g cos beta that's equal to 0 and now you can just do an approximation here considering this delta x 
is tending towards 0 and this would be then phi uh, you can just take this to the other side if you take this to the other side then you can have these reversed so this will still remain positive so it's phi zx divided by dou x in that this will be minus and here you can take delta z is equal to 0 minus phi sorry sigma z is equal to l whole divided by l is equal to rho g cos beta okay now so now what you can do here is let's define the combined uh, momentum flux at z is equal to l this can be written is there a pressure term uh, no it's because it's acting in the z direction so it comes over here but does not come over here so this can be expressed as phi is equal to tau xz i'm sorry about that xz to xz plus rho vx vy and here obviously you know this is nothing but sigma dx dvx by dx i'm sorry dvz by dx and you have your rho into vx into vz so this would be for your phi xz and similarly for your phi zz here you do have the pressure term plus to zz plus rho into vz into vz okay so this is your equation and you have the pressure term here as well now there are some things you can do here immediately you already know uh, that your term v x is equal to zero so this goes and you know that the change in pressure z is equal to zero and z is equal to l would be zero because pressure is a function of x and not a function of z so here when you do at z is equal to zero minus phi at z is equal to l these two terms basically cancel out and finally you have the change of rho vz vz would also be zero because at both z is equal to zero and z is equal to l it's about the same finally what you have is your tau zz but that is basically uh, you can just write it as minus 2 new dv dz by d z and this term you know your velocity changes only with x so this also becomes zero so basically what's left just one term so then you can just write as you have done previously your dou phi z by dou x is equal to rho g cos beta uh, basically you know this is equal to dou tau xz by dou dx is equal to rho g cos beta and this is just a good thing because we don't have to do much uh, so now that you are here you just, what do you just do you just integrate it with respect to x which you get is rho g cos beta x plus c1 but you also know that x uh, at the gas liquid interface let's take this is the gas your tau would be is equal to 0 so let's take this as x is equal to 0 so let's substitute this your tau xz is equal to rho g cos beta into 0 plus c1 but if your tau xz is equal to 0 and you have c1 so c1 is equal to 0 so we can just say that that means tau x1 sorry tau xz is equal to rho g cos beta this is also the first part of the equation now let's go to the second part now you just have to find for the velocity as well and you know tau xz is nothing but dou of vz by dou x okay that's equal to rho g cos beta and now here similarly you can just integrate this as well uh, what you get is first you move this to the other side 
by rho g cos beta. Sorry about that, I forgot the x. And now you just integrate. What do you get? Is rho g cos beta by 2 nu x square plus c2. And you know v at x is equal to delta. Sorry about that. Is equal to 0. And delta can be taken as the total um, length or height of that entire film. So I'm substituting this as well. What you will get is Vz is equal to rho g delta square cos beta to nu into 1 minus square by delta. And this makes sense. Okay, and so this is your first part and now you have to find what is the average. See, so you have your velocity and your V average would be your total. So this is by delta, this is by W and that into dxy, dxy, similarly 0, w, 0, delta, dx, dy. Now here the thing is that this is nothing but delta w. And here you know vz, you don't see a y term. So that's also basically just w. So w, w just cancels out. And this 0, delta by vz by dx. Okay, and you know also you can just make this even further simpler by putting everything else out. You get rho g delta square cos beta divided by 2 nu 1 by delta the 0 delta vz by dx so here what you can do is you can just substitute um, the value in terms of delta so let's say so then instead of 0 to 1 it will be uh, let's say delta the function can be just written as x by delta. Substituting this instead of 0 to delta that would be 0 to 1 and this would be 1 minus x by delta square which is already there and your this will also change as x by delta now it's just easier to solve. And solving this you get 2 by 3 v z max which is your average velocity. And now you have to multiply that uh, or just multiplying that same thing with respect to uh, the density that would give you the total mass flow rate. So it's 0 delta IVZ to dx by dy. So what's this giving you? So here it's just delta W delta and then VZ. So let's just take a moment and understand what this is. Okay. So you have your density into your area. So you have this area and you have your density. Right? So this into your density into your velocity, which is meter per second. So do you see what's happening? It's dimensionally just cancelling all out to give you kilograms per second. And it's basically you're, you're just multiplying the area and the velocity which gives you the volumetric flow rate that into your density would give you the mass flow rate, uh, mass flow rate. and now here you just substituted the value for vz and also using this equation you can find um, the value for delta and finally for the force um, acting on z just take 0 to l 0 to w to xz x is equal to delta dy d z and here again it's you just have to substitute this value as mu d v z by dx at x is equal to delta dy by dx and here is 0 to l 0 to w just take out what's not important and finally you get f z about that you cite it here f z is equal to rho g delta LW cos beta and that's basically how you solve for the falling liquid film.